Hey there, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be taking some time to look at the OpenXR preview or beta plugin for Unity. And if you're unfamiliar with OpenXR, what it's ultimately going to do for us is that we're going to be able to have a wide variety of controllers where we can get their input directly within Unity. We're not going to need any additional plugins or anything like that. So if you're going to create an app or a game that's going to be on several different platforms, this is going to make that process a lot easier. And over the past couple of years, dealing with VR input in Unity has been a little awkward, uh, depending upon what version you were using, what headset, what platform. It was very specific and it was very difficult for someone who was just getting into VR to figure it all out. So obviously we'll be going over OpenXR, how to set it up, and how it interfaces with Unity's XR plugin manager. But we'll also take a little bit of time to look at actions as well as take a little bit deeper dive into input to actually using some values within our interactable objects. But if you're still unsure about what OpenXR does, uh, Unity put out a great post on the forums that'll describe it in better detail than I can. But there are some specifics that I do want to take note of, so we'll look at that right now anyway. Where we're primarily going to be looking at this Unity XR tech stack diagram, where it illustrates how all of the different functionality providers are going to be working with Unity. If you've worked with the newer XR plugin manager, some of these will look familiar. You'll see that we have Oculus, Windows, Magic Leap, but now we have OpenXR. And all of these are going to be interfacing through the Unity XR SDK. What this ultimately gives us is a bunch of versatility for what platforms we actually want to target. And this is a useful abstraction layer because it takes all of that low level plugin code from all of these different providers and it gives us ultimately the same functionality within Unity for all of them. Moving on down to the getting started section, we're just going to take a quick note of what we need in our project for this to work properly. We'll be going over the normal steps for getting it set up, but the really big thing we want to focus on is that OpenXR currently only supports action-based input. Where if you're newer to XR Toolkit, I'll link a video in the description of going over action-based versus device-based input. And this is important because OpenXR only supports the action-based input that we can get from Unity's new input system. Because Unity has also provided us with some controller samples for common controllers that we would use in OpenXR. And that's including things like the Vive as well as the Index. And we'll be looking at setting those up as well. All right, I think that about does it for the explanation. Let's get into Unity so we can work all this out. All right, so here we are in Unity. And I forgot to mention this before, but there is a template in the description if you'd like to follow along or use your own project. I've already gone ahead and set up the action-based input. So if you're not sure how to do that, I would advise just downloading the template and maybe looking more into action-based input later. But if I go to my XR rig really quick and I go to my controllers, you'll see that I currently have the action-based XR controllers set up. I also have a couple of examples in here that we'll be quickly going over for doing just basic input as well as an interactable example, where we'll be taking a closer look at actually reading some values from the actions that were given. All right, so let's get OpenXR set up. Let's go up to Window, we'll go to Package Manager, we'll scroll down here, and we'll select the OpenXR plugin here. And you'll notice that it's in preview. If you don't have preview packages enabled, you'll want to go over to the gear icon here and, and hit Advanced Project Settings and then just hit enable preview packages. So we can now exit out of that. And now let's just hit install. All right, so now that that's done, let's exit out of that. And then we're gonna to wanna to go to our project settings. One thing we'll take note of before we do that though, is that for this to work, you need to make sure that you're working in Unity 2020.2. If you're not, the OpenXR package just won't show up at all. All right, let's go to edit. We'll go down to project settings. We'll go to our XM plugin manager, and then we just want to click on open XR preview. And once you enable it, you'll see that we have this little warning here. It says your project has some settings that are incompatible with open XR. Click to open the project validator. So let's click that. And this extra window will then pop up. And then depending upon your project, you may have fewer or more issues here. All you got to do is hit fix all. But one thing you'll notice that I still have an issue here where it says at least one interaction profile must be enabled where we can do that in the features menu. So we can exit out of this and let's go down to the features here. And these are gonna be those controller sets that we talked about earlier when we were looking at that forum post where it has setups for the Vive controller as well as the index. I'm specifically gonna be using the index, so I'm just going to click that. And if you would like some additional information on how the button inputs are mapped, we can click this question mark icon here. Well, this will give us some useful information for the inputs we can get what Unity has given them for a name, and then the actual value that it's going to output. At a glance, this also gives us all of the inputs that Unity can currently accept from the index controller. 
All right, and then we just wanna exit out of our project settings. And then we're actually, we pretty much have OpenXR set up at this point. So let's hit play and we'll make sure it all works. All right, and it looks like both our headset and our controller are tracking correctly. So let's exit play mode. And just so I can show you, I'm gonna go down to my Steam VR and I'm gonna drag it in just so you can see that I'm using the index controller right here for my right controller. And if you want, you can take a second to look at this input example that I wrote where it's going to specifically reference the activate action of the right hand. And if we select this really quick, it's gonna be the one that's gonna be included in the sample set. This script is gonna have an example for subscribing and unsubscribing to the pressed, the released, as well as the perform function for getting any time there's a value difference. And this is just really here if you're curious, but also to test out if your input is working. What I'm gonna be talking about a little bit more in this video is the interactable example where this is gonna be a grabbable object that we can pick up and when we pull the trigger, we're gonna be getting that trigger value and applying it to both its scale as well as picking a good color along a gradient. So let's close our sample folder. Let's go to OpenXR, go to our scripts, and I'm gonna open up this interactable example script. Where kinda of like I said before, we're gonna be taking a closer look at actually reading some different values from our input actions. Because despite that previous input example that I showed you, when working with input, it's usually good to work with the actions that we've already been given, because I can imagine it can be really difficult to sort of manage trying to get extra inputs into a particular interactable object. So this is just a brief example of that. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is setting up our variables. We're gonna have one for a public gradient so we can change the color of the object depending upon how much we've pulled the trigger. And then we'll have a reference to its mesh renderer. We'll then be getting the mesh renderer in a wake, and then whenever this interactable is processed, we're gonna to check to see if it's selected. And if it is, we're also then gonna to check to see if it's going to be the dynamic update, and we're gonna be updating the mesh. Moving on down to that update mesh function, we're gonna to need to first jump through a few hoops to check to see if the controller is action-based. We're gonna to wanna to get the value of the action, and we're gonna be specifically passing in the activate action of this current action-based controller. Once we get its value, we're gonna be using both the apply gradient and apply scale functions and just passing that value into it, which that's all pretty self-explanatory. The somewhat trickier part is dealing with the action-based controller. So let's move on down to that, where we can use the object that's selecting this interactable and we can cast it to see if it's an XR base controller interactor. And this is because the base controller is sort of the lowest level that's gonna have all of the functionality we're gonna need. We couldn't just use a basic interactor because it doesn't have the necessary inputs. But if it is a base controller, we're gonna be using it so we can get a reference to its corresponding XR controller and then checking to see if it's an action-based one. And then we're going to be storing it within this controller variable so we can return it using this out keyword. We're also gonna be returning a Boolean value here just so we can clean up the update mesh function. We're only gonna to wanna to run the function within that if statement if we've successfully gotten a controller. And then moving on down to the get action value, we're gonna be putting in an input action property, which has a lot of extra information in it, but we're specifically gonna want the actual action itself, where we're gonna be using the read value function and passing in the type float to let it know that we want a float value from it. And then moving on down to our final apply functions, these are pretty simple. We just wanna evaluate our gradient with the value we're passing in and then apply it to our mesh renderer. And then we just wanna add on to this current scale of the object. And that about does it for the actual code. Let's go back into Unity so we can look at our actions to make sure that we're getting the right inputs. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, let's go to our samples. And I'm gonna double click the XRI default input actions. And these are the actions that are gonna be used for all of our inputs as well as doing the position and the rotation of our controllers and our headset. But what we wanna do is we wanna look at the activate action that we're using for manipulating our object. So let's click on the right hand here. We'll click on activate. And you'll see that the action type is currently set to button. And what this is gonna do is whenever the trigger isn't pressed, it's gonna be a value of zero. And then when it's pressed all the way, it's gonna give us a value of one. But obviously we're gonna want a smooth transition between those values, or we actually want the value of the trigger itself. So we can update this to go from an action type of button to a type of value. And then we can do control type and we'll wanna click axis. And what this will do is it'll actually give us the values between zero and one and not just the values zero and one themselves. And we can do this because if we look closer at the activate action here, you can see that it's currently set to the trigger input. 
And if you remember, if we looked at the inputs for the index controller, the trigger is actually the value, but Unity is converting it to what is essentially a Boolean value for us. This value is also handled within the controller state itself, where it has a button press value. So don't worry too much about screwing any of that stuff up. But that actually does it for the right controller. Let's do it on our left controller as well, just to be safe. There we go. And then make sure you save. If you don't save it, none of this is going to work. So let's hit save. Let's exit out of here. And that about does it. Let's go ahead and hit play and hopefully this all works. And as you can see here, our object is reacting to all those inputs or those values that we're getting from our activate action. You can also see in the console that we're printing out the actual value that we're getting, but also when the trigger is both pulled and released. And I think that about does it for me in this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.